It's Conduit News Radio with Paul Harrell. All right, folks, welcome back. Happy Independence Day, I guess, right? July 2nd. This is when the vote actually took place. They didn't sign the thing until July 4th. Welcome to the program. We have Senator-elect from District 15 in the great state of Arkansas, Senator Mark Johnson. Senator-elect Mark Johnson. Hey, thanks for uh, being on the program, Mark. Thanks, Paul. It's always a pleasure to be with you on this. I guess we could just celebrate this whole week. We'll just call it Independence Week. How Let's about do that? it. Independence Week. I like it. That's like uh, that's my wife says that uh, the month of June is her... Uh, birth month so she wants to celebrate her birthday all month long and uh, yes we, we have a saying around my and i won't uh, make a big deal out someone will get back to her but uh, <laughs> we refer to the air the time the week or two around my wife's birthday as is kathy fest so please don't spread okay. that <laughs> kathy <laughs> fest okay something tells me that your wife and my wife would would get along in their uh you know i'm sure they would interpretations in of birthday oh, it's so interesting you, you put that clip of president reagan uh you know he, his point is so valid in that you know we drew up the uh, the constitution and then soon after the bill of rights to more or less not you know we and and patrick henry gets a lot of credit for this but others are involved too but you know, we passed the Constitution, we ratified it in the various states with the promise that there would be a Bill of Rights because the, you know, in the Declaration of Independence, we talk about that the, the just powers of government are those that they have from the consent of the governed. And that, that is so important for people to remember. And, and President Reagan's statement that you just played points out that but this is the people telling the government what they can do, not the other way around. And and that's what sets us apart from, you know, up until that time in history, every other government, even wise governments, were were some kind of benevolent dictator, king, or emperor, you know, giving the people rights. In this case, we said God gave you those rights. And we're just going to create this mechanism to secure it. So I'm I'm so thrilled that you played that that clip from President Reagan. It it really summed things up. Yeah, me. and and there is. I'm I'm glad that you mentioned, you know, that the rights come from the Creator. That is such a key uh, difference, uh, you know, with America versus other governments, and uh, it fundamentally established America under a, a, a form of humility because we're 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 saying we don't have all the answers, and that's a very strange thing for any government to do it because like you said it's it's there was always some well first of all i mean america stands in complete contrast to king george and they were like you know this is strange because we're preaching the gospel you know you, you had the you had george whitfield and the great awakening and you had all these things happening and they were saying that look um everybody's going to be judged uh, by by God and you know your righteousness uh, can I mean it, your only chance is for your righteousness to be found in Christ and so if, if that's what they were preaching Mark they, the the colonists start to think well w w then what is this concept of a royal bloodline and why does why does King George have why is he special if we're all going to be judged by God why is this one guy special and that I feel like you know, put planted the seed that eventually allowed us to throw off the yoke. Oh, absolutely, and, and the and um, Americans at that time looked at, the, at many of them looked at themselves as free Englishmen, and as Parliament and the King began to treat them like they were something less than that, second-class uh, citizens or subjects, if you will. Uh, that that was the real beginning of it because they they George Washington and. And Thomas Jefferson considered themselves uh, uh, equal to all of their former kinsmen, you know, on the other side of the moat. And uh, it was it, it, that was sort of the thing. Wait a minute, I'm just as good as the, you know, the, the Duke of whatever, you know. And mm -hmm. and that was the the beginning of that is, is seeing each other as equal. But but I really want to thank you for having me on. I, it's never like you think it's going to be. It doesn't matter, you know. I've been around. A lot of people that know me know I've been around this stuff my whole life, but being a senator-elect is very different than, than just thinking about it or even, you know, 50, 60 years around the institution. You just, it, you're, you're now kind of having to actually make those decisions. And 
And, you know, Paul, one of the things I promised in my campaign is I would work on ethics, and I've been working on it. I'm actually working on a draft of a bill. I've talked to uh, some other legislators about it, uh, specifically some House members as well. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm working on this thing, and, and, and I don't want to take anything away from the work that the new Senate Ethics Committee is doing because uh, they're kind of doing an inside thing. It's an inside baseball. These are senators policing themselves, but but what I'm working on will be a statute that will uh, uh, prescribe some behaviors and uh, set some criminal penalties for those that that violate uh, the public trust. And and you know we we do need to have the Senate have rules that uh, and procedures that people have to disclose their uh, conflicts of interest. And uh, I would take it maybe a step further than the the rule that was recently passed that more or less says uh, you have to shine the light on yourself. I would say that we need to take it a step further and that in certain cases, and then this is where it gets difficult, uh, which cases, but uh, that a senator would have to recuse from participating in certain uh, legislation, including voting on certain legislation. And I, uh, Whatever I come up with, and, and my other colleagues that are working with, whatever we come up with, uh, it'll have to meet that test. That's actually a really good point, Mark. Sometimes they are incompatible. So are we willing to are, – are, how many legislators down there now or people you know who are involved in the process are willing to accept that as a potential outcome? Because if if you if we are willing to accept that as a potential outcome, meaning there's some legislators you know who are attorneys that, that it's just not going to be compatible incompatible for you anymore, uh, you, you're, or you're going to have to alter the type of clients that you take. I I feel like that's perfectly reasonable, uh, it, you know, if it means that we as as a as a people have more confidence in our government that they're not enriching themselves you know, through this illicit manner or having this conflict of interest. But I, I'm kind of also skeptical at the same time, you know, if, if that outcome where it's possible that it's just not compatible, if they reject that as being a possible outcome from these laws, I don't know if the problem, you know, is, is going to be properly addressed. What are your thoughts on that? Well, there's no magic bullet for this thing. I wish there were, but, uh, we, we do bump into the, the problem of, uh, uh, again, the citizen legislature thing. I mean, you're not going to get successful people, then that smart people, the people that we want to serve, uh, to quit everything else they're doing and, and uh, take a $40,000 a year job and, and, mm-hmm, and, mm-hmm. and do this full time. Now, the people could decide, look, you can't have any outside income. This is the only job you can have, and we're going to pay you Picking them one hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year, about what Congress makes, and uh, uh, that's it. You can't get any other income. Well, if we want to do that, that's fine. We've done away with that citizen legislator. We don't have a, 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 a Senator Gary Stubblefield who is on the farm during the day, and we don't have a, right. a Senator uh, uh, Larry Teague who's in the insurance business and understands the day-to-day problems of that. You know, we don't have and that. that's, that's bad. I think we need that input. But, uh, but there, we've got to, to reconcile those problems. And, and one thing I want to point out about the things we've seen, the scandals we've seen lately, and, and I'll mention Senator Files and even Senator A, if we want to do that. Um, <laughs> these people didn't come to the legislature with these clients, this type of business, and those problems. These are people, and I... I Knowing these people, and I'll add Senator Woods to the mix, these are people that came to the legislature with good intentions and for most part from early in their career were good, conscientious, conservative legislators. And somewhere along the way, they were tempted and succumbed. And and I, I say that. Now, that doesn't mean there aren't people that are elected to the legislature that the first day they sit there, they're a crook. Yeah, I mean, you know, Mike and Neal, it didn't take Mike and Neal very long, and he was compromised pretty much immediately. Well, and I tell people, and some people will shock when I say this, I say, you know, Nick Wilson came to the Senate as a reformer, and a little bit too liberal reformer in my view, but that's not 
you know, never had a crossword with Senator Wilson. But Nick was part of the, the reform uh, group that were trying to take down some of the, the old ways of doing things where a senator was not just openly uh, on a particular side. He was actually the lobbyist, paid lobbyist for a particular interest group. Mm-hmm. And it was perfectly legal at the time. And we look back at things like that almost in shock, but it was just accepted at that time. So, uh, and, and in, in fairness, you know, Nick came to, to one of his uh, movements were to try to break that up. Well, he succumbed to sort of to the dark side and, and people are tempted and there's, you know, you add the kind of money that's flowing through the Medicaid program to the mix and uh, you've got unscrupulous people like uh, uh, Mr. Cranford and, and, you know, it's a, you get the result that we've seen and it's, it's not a, it's not a good thing and, and it, it causes the people to need to be so, much, much more conscientious. I, I agree with you. And I think what we have to do and and I, this is what I hope, you know, getting your message out, Mark, and what you're working on. Somehow we have to penetrate that, that Marble Palace bubble uh, and get people to realize the severity of what is, has taken place and how bad it really is. I, I mean, some of this has been reactionary because the mainstream media is finally getting involved here and asking tough questions and, you know, good but when you you know you go down the list like you just did files woods uh you know uh rusty cranford everything else we've got i i and I, I just don't want the exception to make the rules because you know if we're coming down on them we're putting these new laws in place the the exception doesn't need to make the rule necessarily and i think if we approach it from that mentality I think it's, you know, I think it's going to be very effective. At least I, you know, I hope it is. I got good hopes for it. I'll give you the last word, well, sir. I, well, one thing I, I don't want us to do, Paul, and you're absolutely right what you just said, but I don't want us to reach a point where, uh, whether it's having to, as was brought out by Senator Rayford, uh, uh, put your elderly mother-in-law's home address on your disclosure form and, and things that just reach out beyond just, uh, really disclosure, and that's something that's got to be resolved. Uh, things like this that would discourage good people from running for office because they're just not willing to completely open their lives up to scrutiny. There's There's got to be some middle ground, and, and the question is, where do we set that bar that protects the integrity of the process but doesn't run off good people? And, and let's, let's be honest, as one of my soon-to-be colleagues said to me last week, he said, this is a great set of rules we're writing for honest people. And the crooks are going to always have their pie boxes stuffed with cash. Yeah, that's true. But, uh, immoral that's immoral people will always find a way to break the law. That is that exactly. is a, a truth we do need to recognize in all this as well. Okay, uh, Senator Mark Johnson, I thank you so much for coming on for this pre-Independence Day, or actually it is Independence Day uh, celebration, and uh, we wish you the best, sir. You, you have a great holiday. Thanks, Paul. You and yours, too. All righty. Folks, if you're just joining us, July 2nd was the actual day they voted for.